you are blessed this morning uh, in Jesus name um, this morning we are going to take the, that slot in the Bible in your, in your program says seminar not really a seminar it's just a short um, sharing again and prayer to get ourselves ready for what the Lord would like to do in our lives today um, in this meeting, the theme is Grow in Grace. That's the theme of this meeting, Grow in Grace. It is talking about uh, life development. It's talking about, um, yes, growth in all dimensions. And I want to say to you very quickly, of course you know it already, that grace is a very big word. Grace means so much. And we are living in the age of grace. The only way that God deals with a human being in this dispensation is by grace. Under Moses, it was law. If a man committed offense, he would be dealt with according to the law. But under, under this dispensation, God is dealing with us according to grace. Moses brought the law, but Jesus brought grace and truth. So God's dealing with us in this dispensation is according to grace. The next dispensation is going to be kingdom, when Christ will come to reign physically upon the earth. But God's way of dealing with human beings now is by grace. And you need to understand it. Grace is something you didn't work for. Grace is something you don't merit. It's not what you merit. It's not what you worked for. It's not something you earn as a wage. Grace is simply what is imparted to you by God. And you don't have to even ask why. Um, it's given to you. Just dash. And you need to understand it. But the problem is that grace grows. Grace can pertain to life. You can't really not be born again except by grace. The Bible says uh, we are saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. Is it not so? Uh, but when you are born again and you just remain there by that grace and that grace does not grow, it becomes unfortunate. Grace can be gifts Grace can be endowments. Grace can come from any side that God wants to give you grace. But once God begins to minister grace to you, that grace ought to grow. And that's the matter in this meeting. And this morning, I just wanted to um, again read some scriptures with you. I know that in the course of the meeting, God will be dealing with this from different angles. If you have been stagnant, in your endowment, in your life growth, in your gifts, uh, even in your physical, practical aspects of life, if you have been stagnant, it's not good. Every living thing must keep growing, praise the Lord. Once a person stops growing, that person begins to die. Even in your physical business, even in your physical aspect of life, even in your education, when a man stops growing in knowledge, when a man stops growing, that person begins to die immediately. The name of the ball game of life is growth. So this morning I want to share with you quickly from the book of Ephesians chapter 4. I will just read a few verses and then we will pray together again and then we will go into business. The business that brought us. Uh, what we have been trying to do since yesterday is a preparation for the business. And I'd like to read for you some verses in chapter 4 of Ephesians. We will look at one or two principles for prayer and then we will take our journey uh, subsequently. May the Lord uh, make you a blessed person today in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible said, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord beseech you, I therefore, 
the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of your vocation wherewith you are called. We are called unto a vocation. We are called unto a life. We are called unto uh, there's a way a Christian ought to live. Uh, we ought to live in a worthy manner. We ought to live like Christ. But to say, with all lowliness and meekness and long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Praise the Lord. A man that must grow in grace must take note of the word unity. He must be a person that maintains the unity of the spirit. He must. He must not be a person that causes divisions. He must be a person that understands the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Verse 4 says, there, are, there is one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling, one faith, and there is one baptism. There is one God and one Father of all. He is above all, and he walks through all, and he is in you all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, take note of the word one in every of those verses. It's important for you to develop under mindset. The mind of the flesh, the mind of the world is multiplicity. Many, 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 many. Divisions. But if you are going to grow in grace, if you are going to become all that God ordained for your life, you need to recognize that there is one body. There are no two bodies of Christ. It doesn't matter what denomination you belong to. There is only one body. Praise the Lord. Christ does not have two bodies. Even if your own denomination or your own side is making much progress, if the other side is not making progress, there is no progress yet. One of the things that doesn't allow people to grow in grace and give God a large volume so that they can feel is the mind that we carry. If you have a sectarian mind, a divisive mind, uh, if you have a mind that is always competitive, competing with others, that doesn't appreciate what God is doing in other people's lives, that doesn't um, look at oneness, that doesn't see your brother in another person that goes to another church and you see only those that go to your own denomination as the champions and you look down on other brothers and run them down please let it be known to you that you may not grow much in grace did you understand what I said this morning if a man is going to become all that God has ordained for his life and if a man is going to have the grace of God upon his life multiply and increase greatly. That person must recognize the unity that is one body. Amen? One body, not two bodies. There are no two bodies of Christ. It's one body. One Holy Spirit. Every other spirit apart from one spirit is a false spirit. It's an evil spirit. Even as you are called to one hope of your calling, Amen. Our ultimate hope, all of us, is to go to the bosom of the Lord finally. We have one hope of our calling. We have one Lord. Unless you are not a member of the body, then Jesus is not your Lord. But if you are a member of the body, we have one Lord. Hallelujah. We have one faith. We don't have two faiths. Christianity doesn't have another faith. Nowadays, it looks as if I said there are many, many faiths. No. If it's the Bible we are carrying that is the basis for our faith, then it means that we must have one faith. When we, we abandoned our hedonism, we abandoned our Muslim faith, we abandoned our Hindu faith, and we came into the Christian faith. The Christian faith is one faith. Amen? It has one Lord. It has one spirit. It was one hope. And the word one, one, one is important. 
There are many people who have become stagnant because they drove themselves into a corner and they began to exalt denominations and they began to cause a season in the body of Christ and that was the end of where they were going. Now, if we must, if we must again uh, grow in grace and see this revival become a big revival that will last for years to come, then even though we are not going to say the nation should die because they will not die, we must have the mindset of Christ that we are one. Amen. Amen. That all of us are what? We are one. Praise the Lord. We have one God and Father of us all who is above all and who is through all and who is in us all. One. We don't have two Jesuses. We don't have two Holy Spirit. We don't have two fathers. Who is above us all. Who is, who is walking through us all. And who is in us all. There is no other father we have. If you are a child of God. Then we have one father. Our Lord's prayer does not say. My father who art in heaven. What does he say? Our father is very, very, very difficult for God when his children are quarreling and they still want to come to him. Now, this is very, very important. No father wants his children to be quarreling and yet each of them want to see him but they don't want to talk to each other. It's very contradictory. And so for a man that wants to become something great in the hand of God, you must take cognizance that the mind of the world, the mind of the flesh, is always divisive. They must have zoning. They must have caucus. Yeah? I don't know how we can zone our own in Christianity now. If it's only one Christ, where there's no Greek, there's no Jew, there's no barbarian, there's no Scythian, but Christ is all and all. So where's the zone? But they must have zoning. They must have party caucus. They must have divisions. Because that is the flesh. One of the works of the flesh is divisions. Now, if we don't abandon the flesh and let the Holy Spirit take total sovereignty and supremacy over our lives and lead us as a resident boss, the vicar of Christ on earth, we will not be able to amount to much in life. That's the truth. And so one of the things we want to pray about this morning again and again and again is for the unity of the body of Christ. But not in the sense of theory. You yourself must begin to vehemently fight against divisions. I don't care what church you belong to. Praise the Lord. All I care is that you are born again. We have one Father. We have one Lord. We have one Spirit. We have one baptism. We have one hope of the, of, of our, of the, of the one hope of our calling. One. We must keep the unity of the Spirit in the what? The bond of peace. I've told that the word grace is very diverse. When you talk about any kind of grace at all, it will not do you good when you are, div when you are divisive, when you are not cooperating with others, when you are not seeing the spirit, when you are not seeing the body, when you are not seeing unity and you are seeing division, it will not do you good. Even if you talk about the, the grace of ministry, you will not be much in ministry when you have narrowed yourself down to a small, small, small corner. Now, but that's not where I'm going. I'm going to verse 7 and verse 8, and then we shall pray together. The Bible said, but, amen, even though it is one faith, one spirit, one body, one baptism, one Lord, one God and Father of us all, but, amen, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. But we don't have the same grace. Uh, there's something that is common to all, but there are some things that are not the same. I'm just trying to draw a principle for prayer this morning so that we can go on and pray. Are you following me? But unto every one of us, God has given something special as Christ has measured to each of us certain things peculiar to us. 
So there's a diversity in the unity. Amen? Amen? Uh, there's a diversity. God didn't take away my personality so that I will become united with you. We each have our different, different, different personalities, our different graces according as Christ as measured to each man. This thing that we don't merit it, they just gave it to us. We don't work for it. And like we said, the problem with grace is that grace must grow. If it doesn't grow, it can be, in fact, once something stops growing, if a man is making a movement and stops moving, immediately it stops moving, it starts going backwards. Whatever God gives us that does not increase, that does not grow, is going to, be, to begin to detract, going to begin to shrink. That's the problem. And so, whatever God gives us, he gives it to us by grace, but he expects us to grow in them. He expects us to, to increase in them. He expects us to enlarge. But when this kind of thing does not happen, once a man starts moving, he starts going back. There's something they call inertia that begins to draw you back. It's automatic. And so, there's no stagnant Christian. There's no Christian that should be stagnant and stay in one place. Once you are in one place, once a living thing stops growing... These plants, you see, once they stop growing, they start dying. So, God has given each of us grace. Hallelujah. According to the measure of the gift of Christ. There is something that God has given you particularly. Once a man is born again, once a man is a child of God, that is also by grace. So, life is by grace. Endowment is by grace. But everything... It's given to you by grace. But God expects you to grow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wherefore he said. So even though we are one body, one faith, one Lord, one baptism, one Christ, one God of all. One, 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 one. And that must become our mindset. If it doesn't become our mindset, it will negate the principles of growth. We must cooperate. We must go together. We must prefer others. We must recognize the body. We must find our place in the body if we are going to grow properly. You cannot be outside the body and expect much growth. Mm -mm. This has caused a lot of young, young brothers not to grow as they ought to grow in life, in endowments, in endowment, in gifts, and in everything because they didn't see the body. They saw a small portion of the body and that vision makes, that vision of a very small part of the body makes you also to be small. I tell you the truth today. If some of us will broaden our horizons and embrace the body of Christ, you will see a tremendous change in every facet of your life. But once we want to have the same father, but we are at ourselves, we are picking at ourselves, we are allowing the flesh to cause us to bicker, to fight, to bite each other, to separate and to, and to, and to be in, in a division, and to exalt our own sects. It's a sect that we are exalting, not Christ. If it's Christ you're exalting, you won't talk about sect. You won't talk about denomination. You will talk about Christ. And the moment a person stops seeing Christ and begins to see a denomination, begins to see a sect, that is going to hurt your growth. So, the Bible says, even though it's one, but the Bible said, however, <coughs> however, that but to each of us, and that you, you should, and I need to recognize the other person's grace, actually. Praise the Lord. I need to recognize the other person, what God has given to the other person, because it will also help me in my own growth. If I don't recognize what God gave to that brother, it is to my peril. I will not be able to tap out of his own grace so that I will be established in grace. Hallelujah. So he said, he gave us grace according to the measure of the gift of of, of Christ. Say, wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and he gave gifts unto men. Praise the Lord. So when did Christ minister to us this grace? Every grace that we have in life comes through one man called Christ Jesus. The Bible says, out of his fullness have we received what? 
grace for grace for grace for grace for grace. So every grace you are going to receive in life comes only through one person. Are you following me now? It is in Christ Jesus that you are going to receive every grace. And grace is not stagnant. Grace is meant to grow. And the Bible says when we receive that grace was when he himself conquered, when he became an overcomer, when he succeeded, when he went, when he was, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and he gave gifts unto men. Hallelujah. It was when Christ had finally finished what God gave him to do and because he obeyed even when obedience meant death that God has also highly what? Exalted him and given him what? A name above every other name and when he was raised high up then he led captivity captive, he defeated the enemy and gave gifts, he distributed gifts unto men. Hallelujah. Now now that he now now that he ascended, what is it but also that he descended first into the lower parts of the earth? Are you following me? If he ascended, the Bible is saying, what does it mean but that he first of all did what? Descended. Into where? The very lower parts of the earth. Now he that descended, it is same also that what? Ascended up far above all heavens that he might feel all things. Amen. Now there's a principle here that I want you to quickly take note because you want to pray above it. Your influence in life, your growth in grace, uh, or, or the influence that the grace of God upon your life will bring on the earth can never be above how high you are lifted. It's a principle I'm learning from the Bible this morning that if I am going to have influence on earth, if I'm going to get much grace so that I can have influence, I must what? I must go higher. I must grow. But if I'm going to grow very high, what's the implication? I must become what? I must go very what? Very down. The lower you go, the higher you go. Are you following me? It's a principle that I'm learning from Christ, our, ma our master. Christ has been exalted very high so that he can feel how many things? All things. It is because he has gone higher than the highest that he can feel the whole earth. Now, if God is also going to use you to feel anybody, to, to, to help anybody, to influence anybody, it means God must also exalt you. And God exalts people. He says, if you are proud, what will he do? But if you are humble, what will he do? He will exalt you. And the higher you are exalted, that means the more you grow, the more your influence. But for the man to grow very high, like a tall tree, what must happen to your under? You must go to the lower and lower. So the lower you go, the higher you become. Did you follow it? Now that's very important for us to pray about it. There are many of us that they don't want to go low. They don't want God to, to make them to descend. Jesus went lower than the level of the earth. He went to the lowest parts. And that is why God has also highly exalted him highest. When you see a very tall building, not these are called bungalows. When you see a very tall upstairs, you know that the money they spend in the foundation can build many small, small, small houses. The reason why they invest so much in going down is because if a thing must go up, what must he go? Must, what must he do first? And the lower it goes, so if they are going to take ten stories, it's going to go very low. If they are going to take twenty stories, it's going to go lower and lower. The tallest trees have the deepest roots. Amen. Amen. So even as the word of God is beginning to come to us, we need to pray. Our attitude must change. Some of us don't want anything unpleasant. Don't want anything that is like suffering. We don't want anything that is not complimentary. But people like Joseph didn't just go down. They went down and down and down and down and out before they went up. Because God was going to catapult them to very high heights of influence. 
So they first of all sold him away from his father's house. In fact, the Bible said they brought him down to Egypt by force. He didn't go to, to, to Egypt. They brought him down. Then he went to a man called Potiphar. And Potiphar's, Potiphar, he did very well. I thought they would have released him from there to what he was going to do in life. God says, it has not gone as low as I want because the way I want to take him is too high. He had to go to prison. And if it was you that was in prison when you didn't do anything, God will have released you from that prison because the more you complain, God, the more God says, okay, let me leave him alone. People that have not learned that in all things, God is working together for good and that the more God pushes you down, it means that he has to catapult you very high they don't understand how to grow in grace. You don't follow me? I'd like you to pray because many of us, we complain, we murmur, we grumble too much. If you don't have house rent, God is not, going to, God is not about to kill you. God is making you to grow deeper in faith, to grow deeper in your prayer life, to learn to trust him more. But when you resort to complaining, murmuring and grumbling, you stop growing. In fact, you begin to diminish. But because of lack of understanding and because of our present dispensation where you are preaching faith, that if anything happens to you, it is lack of faith. And so several brothers now take everything unpleasant and they won't share it. There are some places that you don't talk about death. If you die, you are a sinner. They don't announce it in their church that somebody died. They don't, they don't agree that somebody can. You know, all this kind of thing. It is what makes brothers... That even when you're having a problem that you could have shared with a brother who could have helped your life, you keep quiet. Now, <coughs> the simple truth is that no matter what God is doing in your life, it is for good. Now, if you fall into sin, it will not make you to grow. It will make you to fall. If I, you are going down now, you are, not, you, are, you are shrinking. But if it is that God is passing you through dealings and God is bringing you down, and God is allowing you to pass through some experiences. Please, don't compare yourself with anybody. God is trying to help you. When he brought Joseph down, it was too much. <coughs> Praise the Lord. He was begging his brothers. They said, shut up, you're a dreamer. Let's see how your dream will come to pass. We will deal with you. In fact, it was just that God cannot allow a man with grace to die. They will have killed Joseph. But when God has given a man grace, that man cannot die anyhow. God is also responsible to ensure that you grow in that grace to become something in his hands. So they were deliberating when the people from uh, those Ishmaelites came and they said, let's sell the man and just take the money and share it. Let's see how he become great. Then they sold him. That was a great experience for Joseph. That alone will have sunk his heart. He came to Potiphar's house and let me tell you, Joseph would have returned if he wanted that opportunity. He could have run back. How many days journey is that place he was in Egypt to the place where he was coming from? But the man was not rebelling against what God was doing in his life. He kept quiet. He was watching. He became the king in Potiphar's house. Then, as if God was saying, you have excelled at that level, but you have not reached where I'm going with you because where I'm taking you, if you want to get there, you must go down more. God said, okay, maximum security prison. And I see only one mistake that Joseph made when he begged somebody to please go and tell the king that I am here for nothing's sake. Please let him release me. I think that was a mistake. And many of us, that is a form of grumbling. That is a form of, you know, some of us are already becoming bitter, dejected, as if to say God is just punishing us for nothing. But friends, the lower you go, the higher you become. Every honor goes only after humility. So this morning, that will be our prayer again. That all of us who have become bitter, all of us who have become, who are beginning to murmur and grumble and complain and see to say God has hit us so hard. I don't care the agent God used to push you down to Egypt. God must use somebody. A man like Jake, Joseph understood it. When his brothers came and said, Sir, we are sorry that we did this to you, even though we are your senior brother. Please don't harm us. Joseph was weeping. He said, you don't know the truth. You brought me here for evil, but God meant it for good. There's no other person God will have used except you to do this. So don't worry yourself. I will do you the best I can do you. You didn't do me any harm. Now this is a man of understanding. And this kind of understanding and mindset is very important if you are going to shoot high. Amen? 
Otherwise, many of us have cried and complained so much and become very grievous and you have been released from what God wanted to do in your life. But it can be reclaimed. Amen? What did I say? It's not too late. Now that he ascended, what is it that he also did what? Descended first. That God may highly catapult him. That he can feed all of us today is because he went so low that he went so high. And that's a principle of life. That's a principle of the kingdom. Before honor, there must be humility. The lower you go. Now that's why, you know, the message that makes a man to be arrogant call it self-esteem. Now, self-esteem does not, may not have a bad connotation, but there's a way you will preach it. And you make people begin to think highly of themselves, become high-minded. It is anti-growth. But let me leave all that. Finally, the Bible said, he that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he may feel all things. And he gave some prophets and so on and so forth. I don't know how God will come and deal with us, but God will still speak. Now, but what I wanted to say to you now before we, we go ahead is that if there's anything you can do to exalt Jesus, do it. Eh? The more you exalt him, the more he feels you. Eh? And there's a way it works in my mind. It looks as if the more you exalt Jesus, the more he increases you in volume. And the more he feels you and the greater you become. So this morning again, it has become a very critical matter for each of us here to exalt him. Praise the Lord. Eh? And the very first thing that comes to my mind about exalting Jesus is that I must go lower. I must decrease and let him what? Increase. John the Baptist said, I told you before that I'm not his classmate. John was a very focused man. He never lost focus. You see, one of the things about growth is that the more you grow, the more you begin to have an idea in your head that it is by your power. It's, not, it's normal with people who are achieving. They call themselves achievers. The more God blesses a man, the more that man is endangered if his mindset is not correct. There are many of us who came to the level we are today by exalting Jesus. We are lowly people. We are humble people. We are not, we didn't think of ourselves much. We thought about the Christ all the time. And we will praise him, we will worship him and lose ourselves in him. And God began to pull us up. God began to increase our volume. Then suddenly, something happened to you. That even to praise God now is difficult. Eh? In those days, before you start reading your Bible early in the morning, you take some time out. You just worship him. You sing good songs. You just tell him who he is. You thank him for what he has done. But nowadays, you have become so busy that once you get up in the morning, you don't even need it again. Yes, unto him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ through all ages, world without end. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> now, Jesus has become your classmate. Is well, you know, these are some of the problems of growth that has made some people to become stagnant. You don't have a good quality time again with God. And before you can have an entrance, the Bible says, enter is gay with thanksgiving, enter is caught with what? But there's no more time because you have become a man that everybody is seeking for, and it is only the grace of God. But you didn't remember that it is grace. That brought you there. And that one of the things that makes a man to really increase is when you exalt him. And so I see that we need to keep reminding ourselves all the time of these principles of life. Amen? Amen? I need to exalt Jesus. I need to praise him all the time. I need to, I need to appreciate him. What he has done for me is too great. Some of you should look back at where you are coming from. Each time you look back at where you are coming from and what this man has done for you, how he catapulted you out of, the first, out of the realm of darkness and brought you into his marvelous light by grace. 
How he has shared so much with you in life by grace. Let me tell you, what makes a man, one of the things that make a man, in fact, what makes a man to become, to grow in grace is the word of God. Now, not just mere Bible reading, the revelation. And you cannot have a revelation except it is revealed to you. <laughs> That's a tautology, isn't it? But it cannot be revealed to you except you exalt Jesus and take a lower place so that he can fill you even with revelation knowledge. And so even as we begin to do our teachings, our studies, our prayers, to become solid brothers and sisters that God will trust with the coming move to anchor it. And some of you must get ready quickly. God will not wait for us forever. Yesterday night, I, as, I, as I was, as the Lord was sharing with us, I discovered that God has become meticulous, meticulous. Because there was a revival that finished yesterday, this revival of Saul. It didn't take long. God was very, 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 very offended. Only two years, and the revival finished. When God was going to do another one, he said, no, I'm not going to joke with it. I must not joke with people like Elia. No. Now I'm going to be meticulous. I see God becoming meticulous. Hallelujah. You must not set yourself aside. So if you must not, let me say our three prayer topics this morning. Number one is number one. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one body. How many? How many? We will pray again. We have prayed it before, we pray it again. We must recognize one, unity. If you will grow in grace, if you become something in the hand of God, very great, let me tell you, you must recognize that one. A unity. You must maintain the unity of the spirit. We need ourselves. Praise the Lord. We need ourselves. A pastor of Assemblies of God Church in Anguanimi is not Assemblies of God pastor. If he's gifted to be a pastor, he's a pastor of all the brothers who live in Anguanimi, no matter which church they go to. But you entered into one small room. You say, I'm a pastor of Assembly of God, and you have missed your ministry. The big look, your ministry could have enlarged so greatly now. But you are ministering to a few people. And sometimes even in the compound where you live, somebody is a believer, is crying, and you have, a, you have a grace to help that person. You say, go and look for your own pastor. You see, that, was, that is why many of us have not grown above where we should grow. We didn't see the body. We saw a little, little thing, and we thought it was very great. No, it's not great. If we had exercised our spirits and our hearts, some of us have become very great in grace by now. But because we don't recognize grace, and one of the ways to grow grace is to, to apply, apply it. Now, many of us have become very little in a little corner. And that's what makes revival to go into a corner. You must come out of that corner in the name of Jesus. How do you come out? One body, one faith, one Lord, one God of all, one Father over us all, one that works in us, through us, and, and lives in us. One one baptism, one Bible, or do you have another Bible you are carrying? Please, any Bible that is not this Bible of 66 books is not the Word of God. It's not the Christian canon. Don't read it. And if all of us are reading one Bible, you'll be surprised that if you go to Children and Seraphim, one Bible. You enter African church, it's the same Bible. You go to Pentecostal churches, it's the same Bible. You go to Anglican churches, they don't have another Bible. Eh? Is the same if you go to preach in any church, the same Bible. There's so much that ties us together. And it is God's wisdom for us to be tied together. So that the head, from where everything flows, we can be connected. Number two, if you have been murmuring, grumbling, complaining, that is not the way to exalt Jesus. That's the way to stop God working in your life. And don't compare yourself with anybody. If you're going to become very great, you must go down, 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 down. Daniel, they went down. Jesse, they went down. All those brothers and sisters that you saw that became great in influence, 
As if they said they were going towards a bottomless pit, that there's no end. Sometimes you feel so low, so down. Don't speak evil against yourself. Praise God. Huh? Thank him and say, Father, I thank you that you are interested in my life. That's why you are making me to go to prison like Joseph. I know that you won't leave me here. And there's nobody God left in the pit. He exalted Christ. Why wouldn't he exalt him? If Jesus is telling you, say, as I am, so you will be. Walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling. He, say, he says, the path I pass is the same path you are going to pass. There's no other path. If that is the case, some of you that are looking as if to say you are small today, you are going to be an influence tomorrow. Don't complain, don't murmur, don't grumble concerning God's dealings. When a man complains, it's a bad order to God. It makes us sometimes to say, well, it's all right. Since you don't want me to help you. And sometimes it's lack of understanding. And it is because we live in a world where people always compete. You see, the world system cannot do without competition. And it's a mindset many of us have carried into the kingdom. No, excuse me. We are not classmates. Everybody is going on his own. What you are going to be is not what I will be. And God that knows the end from the beginning, who knows where you are going to end, is helping you and helping the other person. All we need to do to ourselves is to cooperate and pray for one another, but not to compete. And I want you to leave this meeting with a great joy in your heart. Great joy that God knows my address. He knows where I am. He knows I'm in prison here. I don't need to tell the baker to tell the king that, that when I'm in the butler, that I, somebody is there. I don't need anybody to, to tell the king. The king knows where I am. Truly speaking, it doesn't matter where you are today. He that knows all things knows you. Knows you. If you are being oppressed by somebody you are living with, the king knows that you are being oppressed and it is for your good. Huh? It's difficult to understand. If you are passing through a very dark tunnel, at the end of that dark tunnel there is light. But you must pass through it to come to light. We need to say this to ourselves because many of us are beginning to feel have an, have an inferiority complex as if God is not on the throne anymore. All the men he used, they came from below. And for them to go higher than others, see, he anointed with an oil of gladness above his fellows. He had to go deeper to the lower parts. And then finally, among the many things we are going to do to keep exalting Jesus, you must be lower than him for him to fill you all the time. For him to, to draw you up and give you a large volume, you must go lower. The dimensions of God are like that. The deeper, the higher. That's how God works. So this morning again, as we rejoice in his presence, I'd like you to be joyful. I'd like you to be joyful. Say rejoice evermore. And again I say What? A bitter spirit, a mocky spirit, a spirit that is always depressed will not do you good. It's an accusation of God. It's, an, it's to accuse God. I want us to spend the next couple of moments this morning say, Lord, be thou exalted, O Lord, above the heavens. Be thou exalted, O Lord, above the heaven, let your glory be above. That's the principle. If you want your head to be full of his glory, glory be above. But if you are going to sing it like a song, a religious song, go outside the tent so that those who want to sing from their hearts. If you are going to be singing and say, well, you see me here now, you see how I am, but let me sing anyhow then you don't need to sing it. But if you are saying, Lord, be thou exalted above the heavens, above my own heavens. Let your glory cover the earth. Let your glory come and do something in my life. Then you can sing it this morning with gusto, with zeal, with cheer in your heart. The Lord bless you. Be thou exalted, O Lord, above we are praying, we are praying. Oh, be thou exalted, O oh Lord above. Ah.
Confess it over and over again. Be thou exalted, O Lord. Lord, be exalted. Be magnified. Be lifted high above my heavens. Lord, what you want to do with my life, go ahead. Oh yeah, let that. Every setback, everything that looks like a disadvantage, it's not a matter. You know what you are doing. I know you know what you are doing. Let thy glory be above all the Alleluia. Alleluia. Be thou exalted, O Lord above. It's a prayer, it's a praise. Ah, let thy glory be above all the earth. Let thy glory be above all Now listen, listen. You must forget your sorrows. You must forget your troubles. You must keep your eyes on Jesus from now. Whatever is happening to you is not a matter. It's not a matter. Your body may be aching, it's not a matter. Once he's lifted up and he begins to walk, everything will take his shape. What has caused you to be at where you are today is because you have not lifted him as you lift, you lift him, he's not exalted over you. I'd like you to forget your sorrows, forget your problem, just worship him this morning. Just, just be in the spirit this morning, just say, Lord. It doesn't matter again. As long as you're on the throne, everything will be alright. I know it will be alright. I understand it like that this morning. There was a time Joseph was down there. Yes, he was expressing the grace of God upon his life. He was not complaining. You have delayed. You have delayed God's blessing on your life by complaining, by murmuring, by grumbling. Now this morning, so. Your name 
focus on him, focus on him. Baba Sandara Boshendara Basena. Yes, Lord. Excellent is your power, Father, Lord. Excellent. Make it melody in your heart to the Lord. Rejoicing in His presence. Exalting Him above your heavens. There's none like you. There's none like you. Glorious in holiness and fearful in presence. Over your people today. Yes, Lord. Just be free this morning. Yes, Lord. You let captivity captive and you gave gift to men when you were exalted. Jesus name we pray one more prayer you are going to say Lord I'm sorry for looking down upon other brothers I'm sorry for speaking evil against your body I'm sorry I have not maintained the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace some of us have called other brothers from other churches sometimes you say, say cemetery cold, cold, cold you know Mortuary, all kinds of things we have said about ourselves. Can you say, Lord, from today, I recognize my brothers. I recognize the grace of God in their own lives, oh God. <clears throat> Father, I won't castigate my brothers again. I won't speak evil of my brothers again. They are my brothers. It doesn't matter where they go to church, Lord, they are my brothers. We have one faith. We have one baptism. We have one Lord. We are saved by one saved, one salvation. We have one Father. Lord, we have we have we have caused divisions. We have we have divided among ourselves. We have called ourselves terrible names. But Lord, we have come in obedience this morning. We no longer castigate ourselves. We no longer run down ourselves. We no longer compete among ourselves. We're no longer going to fix a meeting when our church, another church has another meeting near us. Lord, Lord, we will not back, bite ourselves at the back. We will not slander ourselves anymore. Lord, thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Then the next prayer we are going to pray and say, Lord, please don't remove your hand from me. I've complained, I've murmured, I've grumbled, I've gone to the, to the extent of being bitter, bitter with brothers, bitter with you bitter with my circumstance, bitter with my family. I've said terrible things, oh God. But oh Lord, I am sorry. Don't remove your hand. Take me lower. Take me down so that you may take me up. Finish your work in my life. Don't abort your work in my life. Don't terminate what you have started doing in my life because of complaining and murmuring. Lord, go ahead. Your wisdom for my life is the best. You know what I need. You know what I want. Go ahead, Lord. Go ahead and finish your work. Go ahead and do your pleasure. Go ahead. Beg him and say, Lord, go ahead. Go ahead and do what you will do. Don't spare for my crying. Don't spare for my murmuring and complaining. Lord, I know I'm no longer bitter. 
I have every confidence that what you are doing will bring forth abundance of grace upon my life. Lord, please, please. Your tender mercies, your love, your kindness, I recognize them. You kill and you make alive. You wound and you heal. <coughs> Lord, 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 help me. Lord, show me mercy, oh God. I will not complain again. I will not murmur. I will not, I will not bring a bad order. I will bring you a sweet order. Lord, have your way in my life. Do as you please. I am the potter, you are the clay. Don't cease your work in my life because I'm complaining. I'll let be your name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Now you're going to say, God, remove this bitter spirit. Remove this garment of bitterness and put a garment of praise. I want to exalt you all the days of my life. I want to be humble. I want to look up to you all the time. I want you to be a above so that I can look up to you. I look too much at myself, Lord. Take away this garment of heaviness upon my heart. This heavy garment, that this down spirit, take it away and give me a garment of praise. A garment of praise. A garment of praise. Can you pray? Can you pray? Can you pray? Shakarababa sandala prokobo shanda. Le prosete le paraba seya makoto robo sanda. Mama mama yeka bababa. Yeke bobo bo sondo robo skena moshiria. Lord, take away this garment of heaviness. Take away this garment, this blanket of heaviness. Take away this blanket of heaviness and bring a garment of praise. Bring a garment of praise in the name of Jesus. Bring a garment of praise in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, please, oh God. You said you are going to adorn your children with a garment of praise. With beauty for ashes. You are going to make them oaks. Oaks of God. Oaks of God. Mama, mama, mama. The planting of the Lord that they may become your glory. They may become your glory. Oaks of righteousness. Oaks of righteousness. That's what you say are going to make us. Lord. Lord, remove this garment, this sackcloth. Remove this garment of mourning. Put on a garment of praise. Put on a, a beauty for ashes. Make us plantings of the Lord. Oaks of God. Sit us in your courts. Men that will tower high, oh God. And bring blessing to the nations. Do a quick walk. Remove sickness. Remove anything that is causing us to be heavy. And transport us. Do a quick walk, Lord. Oh, thank you, Father. We worship you because you are walking here already and you are going to accomplish your purpose in our generation. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name, we prayed. In Jesus' name, we prayed. We're going to sing one more song of praise and just rejoice. Whatever you were, you came to this meeting with must not distract you. When we lift him and exalt him above our heavens, he does something excellent. When you look too much at yourself, your, pro your problems remain. When you look to him, the Bible said, if you look into him as a servant looking into the hand of his master, things are going to change for you. So can somebody give us a song from the congregation? Raise your voice and sing it. We'll pick it up with you. Something coming to your heart. Mighty God, you are the great I am. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You. For further inquiries and counsel, please contact Refuge Media, Number One Constitution Road, Trinity Methodist Shopping Arcade, P.O. Box 7332. Telephone 070 
0302-346-8035. Email treasuresteam at yahoo.com or visit our website at www.theplaceofrefuge.org.